there is a need to understand money laundering in layman's terms for a good grasp of the current controversy involving the Anti-Money Laundering Council, the Senate, and RCBC. Zoe Domingo will tell us why on her special report on the issue. The Philippines is now faced with yet another controversy, that which involves money laundering. To the common tao, this is merely the Philippines' involvement with the alleged stealing of Bangladesh money, implicating one of our banks, the Rizal Commercial Banking Corporation. The people accused to be culprits remain innocent until proven guilty. Money laundering is an act or series or combination of acts where money coming from an unlawful activity, whether cash or property, are converted, concealed or disguised to make it look like they come from legitimate sources. Such is what happened with the present controversy involving the former RCBC Jupiter branch manager Maya Santos Digito and Phil Rem, along with the other personalities Kam Sin Kim Wong, a junket operator who points at the aforementioned as the ones who facilitated the illegal transactions. Si Maya ang nagpeke lang sinasabing limang bank accounts. Isang foreigner lang po ang ninifer ko kay Maya. Money laundering is done through placement of illegal funds into the financial system, layering it into a series of financial transactions during which the dirty money is passed through, putting layer upon layer of persons and financial activities into the laundering process and integrating it back to the legitimate economy through the purchase of properties, businesses and other investments. The Anti-Money Laundering Council is the Philippines Financial Intelligence Unit, which is tasked to implement the Anti-Money Laundering Act, or AMLA. It is required to receive covered or suspicious transaction reports from covered institutions. The council can issue orders to determine the true identity of the owner of any monetary instrument or property that is the subject of a covered or suspicious transaction report. It can then investigate suspicious transactions, covered transactions deemed suspicious, money laundering activities and other violations of the AMLA. Senate inquiry is presently being done pursuant to the anti-money laundering law, which provides that transactions in cash or other equivalent monetary instruments involving a total amount in excess of 500,000 pesos within one business day is considered suspicious. In this case, we are talking about $81 million. Tapos dumating ho ang almost one something in the afternoon. Opo, tumawag sa si Maya. Oh, may dumating 6 million. Dollars. Sabi ko, okay. Sabi ko sa nila, dalawa, may dumating ko, 6 million dollars. O sabi ko, Maya, kung may dumating 6 million dollars, ipadala mo na lahat sa suler. Sabi niya, sige. Tapos, tumawag ulit siya. Oh, may dumating pa. 25. O, di, sige, padala mo kung pwede, padala mo sa suler. So, oh, tumawag ulit. Oh, may 30 pa. May 20 pa. Lahat ito, million. Opo. So, ibig sabihin, lahat ito, yun, yun ang 81 million po. The display of antiques between Santa Aquilino Pimentel and attorney Maria Cecilia Fernandez Estavillo harps on the question of security and confidentiality on the part of depositors. Fernandez Estavillo upholding the bank's secrecy law and the confidentiality of clients' accounts. Pimentel on the quest of finding out the truth behind the suspicious transactions. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to dispute the interpretation of RCBC uh, of our law on the secrecy of bank deposits if the depositors have been determined by the bank itself as fictitious depositors there is no point in invoking or applying the bank secrecy law if the committee would agree with my interpretation i think we should be forcing rcbc to submit to us all of all the papers related to those five fictitious accounts. Is RCBC going to submit to this committee all of the documents, including yes. the opening uh, forms for the five uh, fictitious yes. accounts opened at your RCBC Jupiter branch? Yes, the basis. So will you comply with the request? Uh, we have submitted to the AMLC, Your Honor. No, 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 specific, it's specific. Will you, will you comply with the request that you give the documents 
on the fictitious account? Yes or no? Your Honor, because the law is clear. Yeah, I know the, no the law is clear to we you, cannot, but I just need a categorical no. answer. Don't give me any phrase Your before Honor, that. We, we cannot comply. You cannot comply. Okay. That's all I wanted. So, I, I, I move... Uh, I move, Mr. Chairman, that uh, we do not accept the the uh, ground invoked by RCBC, which is the Bank Secrecy Law, as a valid reason to to not to comply with our request. So, yes. and if that should be our interpretation, then I would move that they be cited for contempt. The Anti-Money Laundering Act has been amended in 2013 to expand its coverage but however still did not include casinos. The bill amended merely included foreign exchange establishments, real estate dealers and jewelry and precious metal dealers in the list of those that should report suspicious transactions. In 2013, then-Senate President Juan Ponce Enrile proposed to include casinos in the list, which was however not accepted by the panel of the House of Representatives during the bicameral conference. Hence, up until the present, casinos is still not covered in the list of transactions under the Anti-Money Laundering Act. With the present controversy, the past opposition against inclusion of casinos seemed to have boomerang to those legislators who resisted. Yet this inquiry does not show a promise of legislation as these lawmakers are pressed for time with the national elections looming ahead. The only benefit being presented is the imparting of knowledge of the Philippine banking process and weaknesses, making our system more vulnerable to those who wish to circumvent it. The tumult it is doing to our economy impacts not only the RCBC Bank, which stocks have distinctly and tragically gone down, but also to Philippine investors, bankers and businessmen who rely on the efficiency and safety of our banking system. Senator Ralph Recto during the Senate hearing noted that it took the AMLA a long time until March 1 to obtain a court order to freeze the accounts and was contemplative of what can be done to better the process. The council explained to Recto ex parte issues are doing it upon your own initiative, but needing sufficient evidence for it to be carried out. The clamor is for the passage of the amendment to include casinos in the law. Further, while at it, NGOs, charities, money changers, remittance companies are also being looked at as often being used to launder money. Hence, must also be included so as not to be remiss in aid of legislation. While we await the outcome of the investigation, we continue to hope that the Senate investigation yields productive changes in legislation, be able to convict complicities, and not let everything remain in mere showmanship and futility. From Davao City, Joey Domingo reporting for Y News.